I'm Lisa Shepard. And I'm Jeff Shepard. And we're here at Shepard's Rise with all of our chickens today. We've been raising chickens for almost two years. It's fun to see them all the way from little bitty chicks all the way up to a full grown bird and seeing them lay eggs and seeing all kinds of fun things around the barnyard. One of the biggest reasons that I decided to raise chickens is for the eggs, but we also wanted to have that experience of knowing where our food comes from, um, both chicken meat and eggs. We chose the Rhode Island Red because it's a dual purpose breed. Others are good for meat, others are good for eggs, but this is good for both. Another reason is for sustainability reasons. I do not have to buy any materials like the plastic that covers your chicken at the grocery store or the egg cartons that come with your eggs. And so that's a sustainable thing where I'm not using new materials um, to wrap products that we normally get from the grocery store. Also, especially on a farm, we love that we can use the manure from chickens for our garden. Um, and we have a composting bin where we keep that manure and all the other things that come from the farm, like leaves and other debris from the farm. So we are actually building soil as we go. And we think that's a great sustainable process. So for people who would like to start raising chickens, I would say the easiest part is to actually get the chicks. It's so easy to go to a farm store and pick up those chicks, but my best advice for people who are interested is to do a lot of reading first. They're going to need food and water and shelter, and that's really important to make those decisions ahead of time of what they will have. My work as a university instructor is largely in STEM, and so STEM is really important to me even when raising chickens. And that means when I make all these decisions about feed and care for the chickens and especially disease prevention, that I'm really looking at the data and the scientific studies that support those claims. For example, I have to know about chicken anatomy and chicken digestion to make some of the decisions that I make about what to feed them because young chicks are gonna need a little bit more protein. But once they hit this certain age where they're almost ready to lay, we wanna start them on layer feed. So that has a little bit more calcium and this is important of course because when they lay eggs that shell is made of calcium. If they don't that shell gets really really weak and will break easily. When we want chicks, we actually put them in the incubator. Our incubation period is usually around 21 to 23 days. Eggs are kind of particular. They need a certain temperature and they need a certain humidity and they need to be turned several times a day. So this is kind of a lot that goes on and we want to make sure that we get the best hatch rate from our eggs. Chicks are a little bit particular as well. They need a heat lamp when they hatch. Instead of looking at a particular temperature, we monitor the chick's behavior because we can see if they're too hot or too cold just by their behavior. So it's a lot of looking and observing behavior. For those who want to participate in programs to raise chickens, I would say probably late elementary or early middle school is a great time to start. But I think everybody should know where their food comes from. So when we purchased the farm, there was already the barn here, and clearly there had been chickens already housed in it, but the internal structure was a little bit different than what we wanted, so we did a little bit of rearranging. There was not an external space for a chicken run, and so we constructed that based on some of the bigger, broader picture of where we wanted other things on the farm. This location for the run seemed the most natural because of some of the features that were already here. There's a telephone pole that, that kind of creates uh, one sidewall, and there's an old uh, clothesline pole that was there, and it seemed a natural fit to just have the fence align with that. There was also um, an old hatch door there, you can see behind me, that did not have, it was just walled up. So we opened that up, installed a door on it uh, that enabled the chickens to come in and come out through the day. The chicken wire obviously is a must because you, you don't want it to be a, a wide aperture where chickens can get through or other predators can get in. We try to be as thrifty as we can, and so much of this was built with scrap wood, uh, two by fours we had left over from other projects. We've got some, some just garden poles. We also, you might be able to see on the sides, there's twine that's over the chicken wire. 
That is actually something that we thought we would really need a lot of, and it turns out it, it hasn't. So some of this has been trial and error. So if you were gonna build one of these chicken runs, it does not have to be some fancy expensive setup. The chickens aren't going to care what it looks like, but your neighbors might. So you want it to be presentable. So this is one of our green band girls. We have a green band on her leg, and that indicates that she's one of the ones that was born and raised here. We didn't purchase her from somewhere else. She was fertilized here on, in the chicken run. So this is their coop. They have a roost here. There's their feeder. And for the laying hens, we use pellets. We find that the pellets, they waste less with the pellets than with crumble. Crumble is just these, but they're broken up into really small parts. And a waterer. Chickens actually drink a fair bit, uh, like most animals do. Thank you so much for joining us at Shepherd's Rise, and we hope you have a sensational experience raising your chickens.